Okay, welcome back to Nickelodeon's Comic Corner Classics as Known Classics. This is episode number 1150. Yep, finally reads this far for it. Yeah, I have two DC trades, both from Scott Snyder and James in the Fourth. First up, we have, and I have basically a lot of bookmarks as well because I want to show all that stuff off here. This is Justice League Volume 5 Justice Slash Doom War. Of course, written by Scott Snyder and James Tan the Fourth, the writers of this epic storyline. Yep. And this one, like, they're the writers of this book. The artwork is done by several different artists. We have Bern Bernardo Bruno Renino, Jorge Jimenez, the Austin Francis Man, both Howard Porter, Daniel Cipri, and Juan Alburn. The cover art is done by Francis Manipold. Yep. Yeah, this storyline is, in fact, the final trade that collects Scott Snyder's epic run for this book. Yes, a run that lasted for 39 issues. This collects the last 11 issues of the run. Yep, the last seven. And this book also has many returns of popular characters, some of whom have not been seen in, like, 20 years. Yep, now... Basically, we have the final war. Basically, we have the Legion of Doom versus the Justice League. First up, I want to show this off. It's the return of a character from Tony Bedard's Rebels run. Starro the Conqueror. Yep, great to see this guy. Yeah, he was a recurring villain in the Rebels series by Tony Bedard, which is a fantastic series. Which has been mostly like in trade except toward the very end. But yeah, great the fact that he brought this in. And yeah, I love the fact we have basically reminiscing about Starro. Yep. And plus we have an awesome look for Starro. This is Jaro. Yep, this is Jaro as Robin, which Pat me referred to as the greatest Robin era ever. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Yeah, of course it's written by Scott Snyder, so what can you do? <laughs> yep, basically the storyline is like, Okay, the offer's all finished, we're giving out. Let's prepare for the epic battle we have with the Justice League. Yep. Of course, they take on frickin', well, Jaro first, so I'll take on a bunch of other characters. And they defeat Jaro, but Jaro's not alone. It's the Justice League versus the Legion of Doom. Let the battle begin, let the war begin. <laughs> yeah. So epic. And we get a chance to see the original Starro. Yep, though he did show up in the last storyline, but it's great to see him here. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Yep. And then, of course, we have... Like, we gotta get some recruits. Okay, so... For this Flash plays done by Jorge Jimenez. Just League has sort of been defeated, so... We got to put out some new recruits. We bring in the Justice League Dark. The Titans. The ones that were a branch of the Justice League. Yep. So, they deputize a bunch of people. This one-page spread. I'm not sure why it's a one-page spread, but it is. These fine people, basically, they recruit. They recruit Captain Marvel. Yeah, I know he's called Shazam, but it's Captain Marvel. Supergirl. Red Arrow. Robin. Green Arrow. Black Canary. Beast Boy. Batgirl in an ugly mask. Black Lightning. Yeah, Black Lightning's back. Let's see. We also have Vixen. Yeah, first time in the wild anybody's seen her. I think the last time Vixen was seen was back in Just Like America with Steve Orlando. Metamorpho. We also have Ted Core, the Blue Beetle, who was supposed to retire, but not anymore. Jericho, we see Animan deeply in the background. I see Kid Flash, I see Satana, Firestorm, Miss Martian, Hawkman, Kyra Rayner, Plastic Man, the Wolpeen, uh, Old Peyton Starman, yeah. We also see Tasha Irons, aka Steel, Captain Adam, Donna Troy. Mr. Terrific. In this wonderful 
even though it's a one-page spread, I kind of wish Jorge did basically a two-page spread. I'm not really sure why he did, but it's actually a pretty good spread. And we also see Guy Gardner's here, along with Swamp Thing. Yeah. And we see this thing. Yeah, this 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 totality thing. This is something that popped up in pretty much every single DC book that was coming out at this point. Mm-hmm. Yep. And where are the Justice League? We also see the 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 Roy Cheeto Ant Man, uh, Ant -Man Adam. Yeah, surprisingly, see him. Mm -hmm. And then we have the Justice League. Like, where are they? They've been sent various places. Then we have the Legion of Doom. We see them show up. Where we have Harley Quinn in a very odd-looking costume. Catwoman, Black Mask, Black Adam. I think this is supposed to be Deathstroke. I'm not really sure. The Riddler. That can't be Michael. He's dead. Let's see. Who else is here? I see Gizmo. I see Oracle. I see Solomon Grundy. Black Manta. Ocean Master. Uh, looks like an evil version of Plastic Man. I see what looks like Lobo. A very odd look for him. Captain Cold. I see Bizarro. I see another version of Jericho. Yeah, it's an odd page. But, yeah, this is basically what the Legion of Doom recruited. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and pretty much the, the main flagship members are just Cheetah, Gorilla Grodd, at this point anyways. Lex Luthor, obviously, Brainiac, and Sinestro. Yep. And here's the thing about par Paraphernalia. The mother of basically the multiverse. I'm surprised that this weapon how beautiful this woman is... I'm surprised Lex Luthor didn't try to sleep with her. Knowing him, he probably would have. But the problem is, she is big as a skyscraper. I highly doubt that's possible. Yeah. And we also see that we have the Monitor and Overworld is here as well. Yeah. And there's a reason why the Monitor is here. And if you read the storyline, it feels like Jeff jo not Jeff Johns. Scott Snyder was basically trying to recreate the events of Christ and Infinite Earths. Yeah. Not sure why, but he did. And then we see the Justice League at the various places. One team, basically the Trinity, come face to face with Jack Kirby's Commandy, the last boy on Earth. Yep. Great to see this guy. As in the case of Jon Stewart and The Flash... They come face to face with, I, I, and this is my friend Tiff, my friend Tiff, he would smile at seeing this too. Because even I, when when this issue was coming out, of course this was like late last year, early this year, I was so happy to see this group again. Especially since this is technically the first time in this continuity. And thank you Scott Snyder for being very much good with continuity. We had the first air meeting between Barry Allen and Jon Stewart meeting the Justice Society of America. Awesome. <laughs> Which I thought that was really good. Now, this group is the classic 1940s lineup. Comprised of the Carter Hall Hawkman. Looks like Rick Tyler, Our Man, The Atom, Dr. Fate, Alan Scott, The Green Lantern, Jay Garrick, The Flash, Wesley Dodd, Sandman, and The Ted Knight, Starman. Oh, yeah, and also, Wildcat is here as well. Awesome. Yes. And, of course, well, they have they have the members introduce themselves. They go over there, roll call. And, like, according to the Flash, they already know who Hawkman and Dr. Fate are. Because they know, like, it's, it's like, and I love basically Flash's line here. At the end, all introduce themselves. Like, this is interesting. We know Dr. Fate has secret identity. We know Dr. Fate, his secret identity is Kent Nelson. And somehow that's Carter Hall, the same Carter Hall as running around 21st century. I bet that means Kendra's previous life is somewhere here too. What was her name? Shire? And Hawkman basically chokes a flash. Like, what? You don't share Hall? And he says, well there, buddy. We're her friends, her teammates. She mentioned our superhero team in the 40s. And like rest of you guys, never regret those strangers. We have an Adam and Starman too, but your powers are different. Can your Adam shrink 
any more than that. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> Who are you taking me for? <laughs> I got full size fists if you don't shut your mouth. <laughs> yeah. And here's the thing. In the previous continuity, Barry Allen basically grew up being an admirer of the Jake Yard Flash. Here, it's not really mentioned if he ever knew about Jay Garrick at all. Though he does know about him. Yes. Basically, Barry does remember Jay Garrick, despite the fact Scott's not, not mentioning it here. You see, Barry Allen remembers Jay Garrick. He remembered his name during the events of the really good storyline, The Button. Yes, The Button. Which is basically Tom King and Joshua Williamson's love letter to, to The Watchmen. Yeah. I got a hand. This is really good. Mm -hmm. We see Brainiac doing his normal shtick that he normally does. And then we see... And this that was so cool. Like, okay. Then we have the JSA. And... Well, John Stewart and Barry Allen. Well, fighting crime. And all of a sudden, the Trinity gets sent to the future. Where they confronted by Justice League A. In case you're wondering about this group, people. Okay, there is an explanation about this group. And their leader, of course, is an android hour man. They're from the event DC One Million. Yes, where Heroes from, now, this is from the year 1 million, where they came back to the present because a virus from their time ended up in present day. And it was a really interesting little mini crossover. Only last, now, the main story was like four issues long. And like every book DC had at that point in time had a 1 millionth issue. A few of whom basically were the final issue of the publication run. The most noteworthy one was Green Arrow, where his issue a million was in fact his final issue of his run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great seeing that seeing this group again, and and then we see the return of this character to the group to the series for a time since Drowned Earth, the end of the universe, former location of the Source Wall. We see the return of Aquaman. Yeah. If you're reading Aquaman at this point in time, you're thinking, wait, we already know he's alive. Yeah, the Justice League doesn't know. I'm not sure why they, that he kept this a whole secret. I have no idea why. It's particularly quite strange, but it's a good thing DC kept the continuity straight for some of their books. Well, they kept some Heroes of Crisis. Yep. And then we see the, basically we see Brainiac show up in the future, and he turns into this. Brainiac 1 million, which, looking at this particular creature, it looks very similar to how Brainiac looked during Convergence. Very similar. Yep. And, of course, you have Justice League A working alongside the pro the, the mainstream Justice League. The one thing i got to note, though, is that the 1 million Superman, his costume looks very similar to John Kent's Superboy costume. Yeah. It looks like a very similar look. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, the artist for Bendis' run for Superman actually took inspiration from this costume. That or they're just completely obvious. The fact that it's like that. And then we have Aquaman reunite with the Justice League. Yep. Aquaman. Yep. Readers know he was already alive. The Justice League did not. Yep. And we have the Anti-Monitor working with his brothers... The Monitor, and I think it's like Overworld, Hawk Girl, and the Will Peaton Starman. Though he has Ted Kord's staff, his cosmic staff, he's that was also used by the the the, the, the Starman in in uh, Jack Knight's run for Starman, and named by James Robinson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, apparently the Legion of Doom's headquarters is called Godhead. Yeah. I don't know if I just ego or whatever. And then for some reason, we have the three brothers merge into the Ultra Monitor that take on Parmidia. It doesn't really work out too well. And, oh yeah, Aquaman's in the past for some reason. Yeah, not sure why he's here. 
And of course we also have like apparently the Legion of Doom took time to kidnap Poseidon, the god of water. Yeah, and somebody that Aquaman does well his people worship. He I don't think he worships him at all. And then we see return of a character from first time since the start of this run. Actually, first time I think since no ju actually yeah, sorry this where we see return of Vando Savage. Yep, he's alive. Yeah. It's like Scott Snyder brings back characters in his book that were clearly either killed off by him or just simply just bring him back because he's ending his run epically. And then we have, I thought this was so cool. We have Kamandi sent to huge, we sent to another timeline. What timeline is he sent to? The Batman Beyond timeline, where we see the Justice League Beyond, which is comprised of Big Barda, the Adam, which I don't remember who this Adam is, but it's not Ray Palmer. We also see uh, a version of Aqua Girl, the, the, the Asian, I don't remember the guy's name, one who's a Green Lantern. Warhawk, the Terra McGinnis, Batman. Yeah, from the look of it, it looks like this is basically the world of the TV show Batman Beyond. Not the future that basically Dan Jurgens writes in the current Batman Beyond book, but it's great to see Terra McGinnis. I'm sure my friend Tivia basically would be happy to see this. And then we see various people who had accepted the offer during the whole offer era. Like we see Catwoman, De we see Captain Cold. Looks like it looks kind of like Metamorpho, at least Olmec, a version of Azaro, Plastic Man, like hell. And then we have so one of the most weirdest things happened. Apparently, we have the Anti Monitor go become. I kid you not, he goes to the George Perez classic look i was so happy to see this because i was never a really big fan of the jeff johns redesign i like this design better and i'm so happy scott snyder basically uh, his artist basically restored this that was so good on him to do bring this back yep and of course it's revealed because of him becoming the anti the anti becoming the classic look that will be is dead yep he's dead yeah, a character that Je that Scott Snyder brought into his run is now dead. And then we have this various, like, image that popped up in the sky, like all the books. We see in Gotham City, we see Batwoman. In Seattle, it's Green Arrow and Black Canary. In Philadelphia, it's Mary Marvel, and I think that's Captain Marvel Jr. In Louisiana, it's Detective Chimp. In Taz Tasnia, it's Catman. Yep, making his first appearance since Secret Six. Why the heck they ha that Scott Snyder decided to make a cameo for him here? I have no idea. And we all see return of the Red Rocket Brigade. Yeah, on this wonderful two-page spread. This is fantastic. I love it. This is just so freaking good. And I'm surprised the artist who did this did not get a war for how good this two-page spread is. And then we see something really weird happen. Then we see... They're just like, honestly, you we see, well, well, they're on the control of Darkseid. In the Polaris system, it's the, I think it's the post-crisis, it's the Hawk World, Hawk Girl. We see Oa, even though Oa doesn't exist anymore. The Dark Multiverse, I don't remember who this creature is. We see Earth 3, the Crime Syndicate, the World Order, we see... The Black Suit, I don't remember his name, Captain Carrot. Now, the thing with Earth 3, there is an explanation of why they came back, and that'll be explained in the next book. And I thought this was really weird. And then all of a sudden, we have a cut to the Gotham of Gaslight world. Yes, which has been categorized as Earth-19. Yeah, this is Gotham of Gaslight. Yeah, this is what if Batman was active in the 1890s. Yes. I'm like, wow. I get the fact Scott Sander is a big Batman fan, but my guess is the reason why he did this was because of the movie. Yes, because the movie came out, I think, just last year, and I think that's the reason why he threw this scene in. It's only a few pages, and apparently it's here just to show the pair of the, pair of the, the, the goddess of the universe, multiverse. Yeah, she proceeds to destroy this world. Yep. 
its secondary appearance in the comic books, and it's destroyed. Yep. By her and the anti-monitor. Oh, yeah, he's not dead. Whoopi, he's, he's still alive. And... Okay. Yep. And then we see... <laughs> yeah, we need to go back to Earth. The Justice League. Yeah, this is a kid. apparently the son of, of Hawk Girl and Martian Manhunter. And then one of the coolest... And then we see a great stand-up pose image. We see how big... Like, reminds how big the Anti-Monitor is. He's not as big as he used to be. Yeah, because in... During Crash and Infinite Earths, he was big as a planet. Now he's just... Well, he's just basically the size, basically, of a half size of a two-story house. I get the reason why they did this, because, well, apparently is tall, so making her son shorter, so why not? Yeah, and then she does something really weird. She turns on the Legion of Doom, and Lex is not very happy about this. Yep. Of course, this leads into the events of, well... Next book I'll talk about. The anti monitor they go on a rampage. We have, we have the heroes basically preparing for attack. And then it's like, oh yeah, this bad fact we had a Legion of Doom pop in front of the Hall of Justice. And then one of the coolest things happens. We have the Hall of Justice turn into a gigantic spaceship. Yeah, it's actually revealed that the Hall of Justice is made up of the lightest mineral on the whole planet, which... Kudos for Scott Snyder revealing that. Yeah. And then we see another really cool thing. A two-page spread, a well, much more well-done one, where we see the JSA, the Justice League uh, A, the Teen Titans, Supergirl, the Terrifics, Justice League Dark, Black Lightning, the Roar Cheeto, and we see even Aqualads in this panel. Yeah, this great two-page spread that take on Paraphernalia's invading army of basically shadow demons. Yep. And everybody's basically in control of this flying hall of justice. And then, of course, they try to remove the, the, the totality from the sky. It doesn't work. And everyone thinks they lost. And there's even a hilarious scene, basically, where I think, like, Black like, oh, yeah, running low. And then we have the sexy Santana basically chanting her spells backwards like usual. Yeah. <laughs> and then we see the Justice League do this. Yep, being powered by... Well, I think it's supposed to be the Green Lantern Corps, where it's just... This Justice League lineup, basically, to take on Lex, is just Jon Stewart, Hawkgirl, Miss Martian, Aquaman, Flash, Superman... And Wonder Woman in this wonderful ending issue, ending page. It's so good. Mm -hmm. And then we see at the end of the next issue, Martian Manhunter returns. Yep, because why not? <laughs> yep. And now we're getting toward the very end. And we see what started this all. This doorknob. Yes, that basically, this is what really was basically stored. In this doorknob. Yep. <laughs> Which I thought was so cool, the fact that he did this. And then she sort of gets in prison again. When they think they lose. And then they're, they're just like confronted by the Quintessons, made up of High Father, the Phantom Stranger, Hera. I think that's Zeus, the Spectre, and one of the Guardians. Yep. That's the Quintessence. I mean, I get, well, Hera and Zeus and High Father because they're gods. But the Phantom Stranger and the Spectre? Wow, that's something. Also, the Spectre is wearing a completely different look. Because in the, la in the other books he was appearing in, he had frickin' pants. Now, for some reason, he's back to the classic look. And from the look of it close up, it kind of doesn't look like Jim Cork. It could be, it could be Christmas Allen, I don't know. But they just like get back their powers, and of course their suits, and along with the black suits, and and then the story ends with story continues in Dark Knight Death Metal. But don't worry, there's still more Justice League after this. Yeah, with 
Rob Venditti doing a storyline where he kills off the Eradicator. Yep, don't worry, we'll talk about that soon when it comes out. This book is really, really good. I get this book roughly a 10 out of 10. Really good. Final thoughts on Scott Snyder's run. Oh, in case you want that sounded, since I'm, since I'm on my way along. This run, in my opinion, is was really good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. All five trades that collect this run. Yeah, surprisingly, five trades that collect a run that's roughly 39 issues. Usually, you probably think a little bit longer, but nope. Jeff, Scott Snyder had these storylines be so freaking long. Well, the last couple he did. And yeah, it just really, really good. But now we're getting scored toward the end of Year of the Villain. I've reviewed some of this stuff related really to Year of the Villain, but never thing. But this is very important, something related to Year of the Villain. This is Year of the Villain, Hell Arisen. This collects the four issue miniseries, Hell Arisen, and the Year of the Villain special. Yep. Which I'm not surprised. It was it was a little surprise to collect here. I kind of thought that maybe, excuse me, that they would have the issue itself collected in the issue of Justice League, but nope. Here. Okay, that's fine. And this simply put is Lex's fate after the storyline. Yep, it's what Lex was up to immediately after the this this book ended. Which, by the way, thanks to this book ending. Scott Snyder is only doing one thing now. He's doing a mini. He's doing Death Knight. He's doing Dark Knight Death Metal. <laughs> yeah. This book is basically Lex dealing with the Batman who laughs, his Secret Six, these guys, which. That was part of the storyline, The Infected, that started with his miniseries that led into the first story for Batman and Superman and The Infected storyline, which is a tie-in crossover to this. Yep, a tie-in crossover. And we see the return of Mercy Grays for the first time since Jeff Johns run for Justice League. Yep, that was the last thing he was seen. And the first issue of the miniseries, before I get to it, you're the villain, basically, is how Lex... Got the way he is with the white skin and the like look that he has. Yeah, but here's the thing: the 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 year of the villain special is done by James in the fourth, who does basically one story. The second story, which is called first story, is called Doom, which basically is the start of the year of the villain stuff. Leviathan, done by Brad Michael Bendis, that's the start of Leviathan storyline. Justice is done by James Tinius. Doom is done by Scott Snyder. The first story is simply put this. Amanda Waller goes to the White House. Want to talk to the President. And she's confronted by the Legion of Doom. Yep. Yep. And Lex simply fires on employees. And like has a conversation with Captain Adam. We also see that this issue has set up for various other storylines. We see Bane preparing for the City of Bane storyline. Yep. Oh yeah, in case you're wondering, that is a Thomas Wayne Flashpoint Batman there. Along with the Psycho Pirate. Yep. And we see various other things happen. Yeah, the whole point of this issue is set up a whole thing related to Year of the Villain. And go put the offer out. And then the, the first story ends with Lex blowing up his building, apparently also with Captain Adam. The second story involves Batgirl and Green Arrow team up to take on Merle and the Archer. Yep. The whole point of this chapter is a set event Leviathan. That's really the whole point of this. Plus we see Leviathan himself show up. Yep, Leviathan's in here. I'm not going to spoil who Leviathan is, because who he is is one of my favorite characters. I was actually kind of surprised that it was this character. And, well, Danny Lisa points out, though, that Leviathan is not Red Hood, or... Let me prove, let me prove this new Leviathan isn't Red Hood. Yeah, it's, it's not Tally either, because she has nothing to do with this at all. And in the case of the Justice League stuff, it's simply put, set up for... The Doom, just like Doom War storyline. That's simply what that story is. Yep. 
Now, the first part of... They, all, they, they start with the miniseries of one year prior with a flashback takes place between... Oh, come on, seriously. Thank you. Sorry about that. I know my computer decided to do that. Yeah, we have a flashback sequence taking place between Dark Knight Metal number 6 and Justice League number 1. Interesting, and no mention of no justice for some reason. I have no idea why. Yeah, it just lex in his place, and, well, have a conversation with the Batman who laughs. Yep. Oh, yeah, and this first story actually explains, like, okay, despite the fact that Jeff Johns pretty much massacred the entire group of the crime syndicate during both Forever Evil and in Dark Side War, there is an explanation of how the heck they came back. Apparently, the multiverse restored them. Yes, despite the fact they were all killed. Ultraman got killed by the Anti-Monitor. Owlman got killed by Dr. Manhattan. No joke there. Uh, I think it was Warrior Woman got killed by Grell. Yeah, she got killed by Grell. Power Ring got killed by Sinestro. No joke there. Johnny Quick as Lake Frozen by Captain Cold, and he was killed by their world version of Lex Luthor. Mm hmm. Yeah. And apparently they know Lex, despite the fact they probably don't really remember it. I'm not sure why in the world they have. And also, yeah, for some reason, despite the fact they brought back the crime syndicate, no Atomica. Yeah. And as a brief appearance by the classic monitor. Yep. Yeah. Though, despite the fact the crime scene brought back, they didn't really play a role in this. It's simply put, just Lex versus the Batman who laughs with the, pretty much the entire storyline. Yeah, that's simply what it is. And also, Lex taking on his Secret Six. Yep, that's really the main story of this one. Yeah. And we see him also trying to infiltrate the Flash Museum, posing as Animal Man. And we see a brief camo by Hawk, Dove, Vixen, and Miss Martian. And we see Booster Gold also get knocked out. And then confronted by infected versions of these characters. And, well... And then we see the Joker show up! Yeah, his appearance is completely random. Yes, and... This is something that apparently Jameson did get flack for this. Because... This issue has the first appearance of this woman. Which woman is that? Well, let me show her. She has show up in this issue. I'm not really sure why Tinia did this for. He did create this character. Yep, we have debut of... Punchline! Yep, despite the fact this is not her debut. Nope, this is not her first appearance. According to DC, it is... Batman number 94, that is her first appearance. Despite the fact she appeared here first, it's quite weird. Yes, I know DC did get a lot of flack for this over confusing people of when in the world Punchline was her first appearance. Punchline is simply put the replacement for Holly Quinn for Joker. Yeah, she's Joker's new, new squeeze. That's what she is. Oh, and by the way, in the current issues... In case you're wondering, has she met Harley? Oh, yes. And they hate each other right away because of the whole thing with, with the Joker. Yep. And we have Lex going his... Go go back to classic Neil Adams by having him go into the, to the Lex suit to take on... <laughs> yeah, we also see apparently one of the affected is Dr. Light. Yep, the female Dr. Light. Yep. And they take him on. And then we see people who Lex made an offer to. Like, I bet on villains. And then comes the final issue of this miniseries. Where it's revealed that apparently Lex turned Mercy's apartment into some kind of safe house. We have a great nod to Jeff John Justice League. Though it's not really explained why Shazam was kicked off the team. Lex simply quit. As in the case of Captain Cold... I think he quit, but in the case of Shazam, there's no reason why he quit. Nope, no explanation for that at all. And there's references to Forever Evil in here, and, well, 
after apparently like then of course Batman who laughs is brought before paraphernalia paraphernalia basically talks to him for a while and she sees some of so yeah Lex is not that good and of course we have a, a mentioning what happened in the final issue of Scott Snyder's Justice League where they all got run off into some tunnel which leads to the next crossover and of course Lex really wants to kill Batman who laughs and she's like you dare speak to me like this and he's like you were spark trapped inside of a doorknob until I freed you I'll speak to you how damn well I please yeah and then because she he basically did raise his voice to her he she proceeds to turn it back into a human yep Lex is human again yep all the changes made to him prior to this completely undone and then Lex is sent back to earth and despite the fact that, well, Preferably has agreed to work with the Batman who laughs, she doesn't trust him. Yep. And of course the story ends with Mercy Grace fighting a naked Lex Luthor and he says, Oh Lex, you're alive. No, we're all dead now. To be continued in Death Metal. I gotta say, this was really good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Get this book roughly a 9.5 out of 10. Yes, my friend Tiffy was never a really big fan of the story of the whole thing we were doing. I thoroughly enjoy this because it has sort of the reminiscence of Dark Reign. The only difference is Lex Luthor is not trying to take over the freaking country. Like no one Osborne did. Yep. The difference is people know he's evil. And he's leader of a supervillain group. Not some evil backstage cabal. Not having his own bogus Justice League. Yeah. I appreciate Scott Snyder even though he took some ideas from Dark Reign. Like having all the the, the year of villain stuff tagging over the stuff. But at least he wasn't a carbon copy of Bendis doing Dark Reign. I appreciate him doing that. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not done with Year of the Villain yet. There's still also The Infected, which I will eventually get a chance to view that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I said this particular, if particular view. Yeah, this is a view quite long because I was talking a lot about Justice League. Because it was the end of it. Yep. But my next view is going to be discussing... Next time I quarter discussing two trades to wrap up toward the end of both particular runs. I will discuss them in the next video. But the next thing I'm going to do today will be reviews for Black Clover and ReZero. I didn't get a chance to do uh, Black Clover last night, but today I hopefully get a chance to do okay? See you in the next video. Bye.